Hi there, welcome to my videos on elementary differential equation. This is video number 8 for chapter 9. The topic is partial differential equations. In the previous video, we derived the formal solution for wave equation. Let's summarize it here. So here is the wave equation. And we have boundary conditions, which are Dirichlet boundary condition and homogeneous. And then we have initial conditions given in the form of um, u axis 0 and u sub t at x and 0 of being the function fx and gx. So the formal solution expressed in terms of the series is this. So you sum up all the solutions u n, which are called the eigenfunctions, and they are like this. They are cosine and sine combinations in t times a sine function in x. So here the um, frequency of oscillation w depends on um, the length l and it depends on the index n, and then lambda is uh, just the c times omega n. And then here the coefficients cn and dn depend on the um, initial condition. cn depends on f and the dn depends on g. And cn can be computed as the fully assigned series of the function f. And dn times lambda n is the fully assigned coefficient of g. Okay, so this we derived um, in the previous video. Now let's have a, a short discussion on the eigenfunctions u n, which I repeat here. It's a product of two functions, one depends on x and the other depends on g. If we look at the function depending on x, it's just sine of omega n x, and this is a harmonic oscillation in x. So um, we can probably visualize it, let's say, on an interval from 0 to L of our interest. So when n equals 1, it's just a sine function. So it will be something like this, half period of a sine function. And then um, if n equals 2, and then and the frequency increases. So you will have a, a whole period like that. Mm -hmm. and so on. So if n equals 3, then you have, um, you oscillate three times. So you go up and down and back up and then return. And then um, n equals 4, then you just do it um, four times. So you come up and you go down and you come up and you go down. Okay, so these are the um, the sine functions, the harmonic oscillation with uh, just the amplitude equals 1. So you see the effect, when n gets larger, the oscillation will have higher frequency. Now let's look at the function g here. Now this is different from the heat equation. In the heat equation, g is a exponential decay. And then and here, so this part here, we could interpret it that for a fixed time t, that's the oscillation, and this gives the amplitude. And this amplitude itself is varying in time in a harmonic motion. So different n will give different um, motion. It will give different um, harmonic oscillation in x. And uh, we also see that lambda n is related to omega n. It's just omega n times the constant. So therefore, as n increases, the oscillation in x, um, it becomes faster, as well as the amplitude in t. So the, the modes, the higher modes, meaning with the larger number of n, will oscillate more in x, and its amplitude will oscillate also more in t. So in connection with the vibrating string in application in music theory, there are terminologies um, which we like to mention. So when n equals 1, um, let's say we have the fundamental node. And then when n equals 2, then this tone of the sound will be an octave higher. 
and then when n equals 3, it will be an octave and a fifth higher. And then when n equals 4, you will have actually two octaves higher. So if you are familiar with the, some basic music harmony theory, then you know that um, a fifth is called a perfect fifth. And the reason for that is that um, the periods um, will coincide after certain repeats. Therefore, the two sounds sound good together, sound harmonious. Now let's put a remark or critic on the formal solution we have constructed. So the solution takes the form of a, a series uh, with sine, cosine, kind of a time varying Fourier series. Therefore, it is really hard to see what is going on in the solution. Say you are given the initial um, shape of the um, wave and uh, of the solution u, and you want to see at t equals 1, how does my solution look like now? And from the Fourier series solution we have there, it is very hard to see. And in particular, and one cannot really get any intuition on why this equation is called the wave equation. That is, the wave phenomenon in the solution is not obvious in this form. However, um, one can manipulate by using some trick identity and uh, observe um, the waves in this equation, in the solution of this equation. So to fix the idea, let's consider a simpler case. Let's set um, g to be zero. That means the initial motion has zero speed. So you are just displaying the stream a little bit of its equilibrium. And then you let go and from zero velocity. Therefore, all the dn's are zero. And uh, we have a simpler form of the solution containing only cm's. It looks like that. So you have a cosine lambda n t sine omega n x, okay, where the lambda and omega are related like this. And in particular, the lambda n is c times omega n. Now let's recall a trig identity, because in the solution we have a sine times cosine. Now we try to rewrite it. The sine times cosine can be written as the sum of the angle and then plus two harmonic kind of a sine function. So in this case, um, probably we learned this in high school, sine a times cosine b equals half sine a plus b plus half sine a minus b. Okay, let's use this in our solution. So our solution is summing over cn, this is the fn, sine omega n x, and then the time function is cosine, lambda n is c times omega n t. So we write like that. Then we can apply the trig identity, and this becomes angle A, and this becomes angle B. Okay, so simply applying that, so we get a half here, and the cn is a constant, and then we have sine a plus b, so this angle plus that angle, and then we see that omega n is a common factor. We take it out, we get x plus ct here, and the similar thing happens when we have a minus b, taking out omega n, we'll get x minus ct. Now, assuming the series converges, then we can switch the summation sign and the um, plus sign here. So we can sum over each term and then add up the two sums. Okay, so take out the half, and then we have cn times the sine function of this, plus the second series is half times the series of cn of sine, but is x minus ct as a variable for the sine function. Now here comes the important part argument in our um, discussion here. So what does this series converge to? What function does it represent? So what are these coefficient cn's? We know that cn's are the Fourier sine coefficients of the function f. 
well, we can um, write it out so we know that summation n from 1 to infinity of cn times sine omega n of anything, let's call it, um, what do we call it? Let's call y would equal to this uh, function f of y, right? Or the um, periodic extension of the odd function of fy, half range expansion. Okay, and then look at um, the difference between this summation here and this summation. The only difference is that this is now a function of x plus ct in place of y. And therefore, this one will simply be the f of x plus ct, right? So since the initial condition is only given on an interval, and then here we require periodic functions, so let's denote this by f star, okay? So once this argument is made, then it's easy to see that this summation here will be f star of x minus ct. Okay, so excuse the messy handwriting and we'll put it in neatly typed form. Okay, so with that argument now we can write, we can write out this summation is half of f star as a function of x plus ct and this summation is half of f star x minus ct. And then again, um, repeating that f star is the odd half range periodic expansion of x. x is defined only on the interval from um, 0 to l. Okay. One can quickly verify that in this setting the initial condition is satisfied. So when t equals 0, and then this is 0, so you get f star x, and this is 0, or you also get f star x, half plus half is 1, and you recover the initial position f of x on the interval from 0 to l. But this expression would tell us a lot about how the solution behaves. Okay, so furthermore, let's make another observation. And thanks to the boundary condition f0 at fl is equal to 0, then the um, odd periodic expansion f star here of this f will be a continuous function. There will be no discontinuities at this, these two endpoints when you expand it. Okay, so now let's interpret this form of the solution here as waves. So what do we know about a function like this, x plus ct? Um, we can probably draw a picture of illustration. Let's say um, this is x. This is the independent variable, it's x. So um, let's say when t equals 0, um, let's, let's, let's draw this in blue. So assuming t equals 0, um, for simplicity, let's say the f function just uh, has a bump somehow mm -hmm, on an interval. Okay? And now consider the case when t equals 1. Then we'll be looking at the function f of x plus 1. So what happens? Well, we know that that will be just a horizontal shift of the function, right? So um, it will be shifted with a, a length of c and to the left. Okay, let me pretend I'm copying it correctly. So this would denote a, a function that takes the initial shape and let it travel to the left in time and the speed is um, equal to um, c. So velocity will be negative c. Okay, so we say that f will travel with the negative uh, velocity to the left, the graph travels to the left. Okay, so once that is understood, then the part um, f star of uh, x minus ct is much easier. So it will also be um, a wave traveling, but 
um, because now this is opposite sign, so it's in the opposite direction. So we'll travel with positive velocity, meaning on the graph, the wave will travel to the right. So now we are ready to say about the solution of the wave equation. So the initial deflection f prime here, and then we um, this will be the periodic extension, the odd extension into the whole real line because we are letting it travel. Okay, and this is split into two equal parts, half of this and then half of this, and then one of them will travel to the left. So this half will go to the left, and then the other half will go to the right, and they all go with the same speed. That's the c, that's the coefficient in the wave equation. And then the superposition of them, just adding these two parts up, gives you the solution of the wave equation. Now, isn't that a much better solution Okay, so one comment on this will be, you might be wondering, well, what if we have the g there, then what happens? Well, um, the wave phenomenon can also be observed when g is not zero. It just involves somewhat more complicated computation with the trig identity of sine times sine, sine times cosine in suitable ways. I encourage you to try it by yourself and see what you get. Now let's take an example of a solution of wave equation using what we have um, observed in this video. So let's set c to be 1, l to be 1, just to fix the idea. You can put it to be any number, then you just have to adjust a bit these graphs. Okay, so um, initially t equals zero, that's the deflection, the function f. It's just a triangular wave, so from zero to one, it goes up with slope one and then comes down with slope negative one. That's the f. And then this part is the f, um, f star that will go to the left, and this will be the one that will go to the right. And now you see that they are just uh, half of that. Now let's consider a later time t equals one fourth. So we know that this one will be going to the left with one fourth. So the tip here will move to 0 0.25, which is here. And uh, this is extended an odd function, so it continues. And this part will enter in the graph. Then the solution here will become like this in the graph on the interval of our interest. And then this wave um, would go to the right. So this peak here will go to 0 0.75. And this part is extended. And then it comes into the 0 to 1 interval of this function coming up at this peak and comes down with slope half. And then the solution will be summing up this one with that one. So if you add this function with that function, then you see that this part and that part will add up to be zero, and this part and that part will add up to be zero. And here are two um, linear functions from zero to a quarter, and then from a quarter to three quarter, this comes down with the slope, uh, the same as the slope comes up, so it's constant. And then that part is coming down with slope one. So comparing this graph to the initial shape, we see that on this time interval from zero to fourth, you, one actually can show that this one, the tip will be just cut horizontally and cut more and more and more. The horizontal part just becomes more and more and more, comes lower and lower and becomes longer, the horizontal part. Okay, so um, remember this shape and that shape, and then we'll progress in the next slide, moving this further to the left and moving this further to the right. Okay, so look at t equals uh, 0 0.5. Then um, this wave from the previous page with the tip at um, 1 fourth is now moved to 0. And then you just have a 
a negative slope of a half here and the same for the positive going wave is from three quarter move to one that tip and then you just get that going up okay and then we add these two up and the positive negative exactly cancels and then we have zero for the wave shape so what happened to the solution would be that you have a solution initially is a triangle shape and initially is at rest and then you let go the tip and then the tip comes down and then cut horizontally and then at t equals to 0 0.5 it becomes a straight line at the equilibrium now but it's in motion and it has speed we did not plot the speed here okay it's moving Okay, let's look at the next time t equaled three quarter. So this shape moves further to the left. So that tip will move in to um, a quarter length in. So here the function is extended. Here it goes up because that's the tip. So you get that. And then this one will go to the right. So this tip will move in at a quarter. So I have something coming down and go up. And that's the negative tip. Okay. And then adding these two up. And a similar discussion we'll find out. At zero, we get zero. At one, we get one. And then on the interval from um, negative quarter to three quarter, this goes down and this goes up. You add them up, you exactly get constant okay so because of the velocity motion in the string the string will continue move downward and then we'll reach this uh, slope one here and then but the tip part will go in down um, as a horizontal line okay now let's give it another a quarter of a time unit now t equals one what happens well this move to the left so this tip is now moved to 0 0.5 and then we get that and then this move to the right and this tip moved to 0 0.5 and then we get that and then adding these two up is they are the same so it's just twice of it and then you will reach a negative 0.5 here and come back to zero okay so this is um the negative of the initial data the initial data you have a triangle wave pointing up and now we have it pointing down so this part would be moving down with the speed and then at t equals zero and this horizontal branch becomes smaller and smaller and it reaches the tip okay so let's uh and summarize it by offering a time snap of the string shape for one period of its uh, motion. Um, so um, in our previous discussion, we discussed it to um, half of a period. Let's complete it. So initial shape is a triangle with the tip pointing upwards and initially it's um, at rest and then you let go your grip and let it start to move and then in a, a little horizontal piece appears and it moves down at t equals one fourth we have this shape and then it keeps moving down at t equals 0 0.5 and we get a straight line so the string is at equilibrium position but it's in motion it's moving down another quarter time later it moved down to here where this is a, a horizontal shape and this is slope um, negative one one and then further when t equals one it m moves the middle part moves the, to the tip of uh, slope negative one here and slope one so this is the negative um, image of that one and then and that we have discussed so far so after that from the discussion we had we can easily conclude that and then it reverses then this will go back and then after another quarter of time in this horizontal line is moved here and then it keeps moving up and then another half 
a quarter of time you get a straight line but they are in motion and then in another half quarter of time the horizontal line moves up to here and then when t equals 2 you get to the initial data here in in this position and this motion will just repeat under our assumption of the model it will just oscillate forever and now um, we know from experience if you pluck a string it will vibrate but then eventually it will die out um, that is because there are um, other factors and dampings and other terms that should come in the modeling of the equation which were ignored in the modeling of the wave equation so this wave equation would be describing like a perfect situation where there's no damping okay so just a comment on that so um that's the end of this video and um, later on we will study another way of constructing the solution basically um it's a method of characteristic which will result in a different form of a solution more uh, geometric it's called the lambert solution okay but um, for the discussion of Fourier series and uh, let's end here and i hope you enjoy this one and i'll see you next time